Right, we're going to show you, um, hopefully, an example of just running through the diagnostics and test plan. We have a F-Series um, BMW. We are going to um, create a fault on the engine by just temporarily unplugging a sensor. Um, and then hopefully that will be captured within the uh, ECU, which the diagnostic software should then pick up. So first thing we'll do is double click on switch ENS on. Then we go into the ISTA diagnostics. Okay, so once the software comes up, this display icon in the bottom right um, becomes visible. Um, so what we'll do now, first thing is always click on the spanner first time into the diagnostic software and just click on the VCI config tab and you can see here we've got Ethernet local network already selected and that's what we use when connecting with the Ethernet cable to any of the FG or I series BMWs. So the first thing we do now is click on operations tab and it will allow us to identify the vehicle so we click on read out vehicle data and then in the bottom right we cl click on complete identification and it will now identify the vehicle and just need to highlight ENET there and click on setup connection on the bottom right and it will now identify the vehicle and run through the test and hopefully it will show a sensor that we temporarily disconnected on the engine um, as a fault that we can then run um, a test procedure against. So you can see there looks like there's four ECUs that um, have a fault logged against them. Some of the faults may well be old faults that have since been dealt with but hopefully one of the faults listed will say pressure sensor. Okay, it's uh, run through interrogating all the ECU modules. So you can see there that there are four modules that have a fault uh, identified within their, their memory. Um, if we click on control unit list, then it identifies here the modules um, that have that yellow or amber uh, saying that they've got a fault identified. So diesel fuel electronics, moving down, integrated automatic heating air conditioning system, uh, transfer box and central gateway module. So what we'll do now is we'll do display fault memory and hopefully our pressure sensor fault will be listed which is here at the top charging pressure sensor signal open or short circuit to earth obviously we disconnected it temporarily while the ignition was on so it, it would have showed um, an open circuit to earth the other errors here um, these are old existing uh, errors that have probably probably disappeared now or been fixed so this is the one we're going to to run a test plan against so what you do now is you click on calculate test plan and for all of the errors listed it will provide it will work out rather different test plans that, that can be run so because we highlighted the pressure sensor error it's already pre-highlighted the test plan that we can run for that particular problem charging pressure sensor so what we'll do now is we'll do display and that will display the test plan the way that the uh, display for each test plan uh, is formatted is that on the left hand side it will show you what the procedure is to follow so literally you just follow it step by step uh, and on the right hand side there's always informational data uh, which varies depending on what fault or what test plan you've selected okay so what we'll do now is we want to run the test there's only one test for it 
Um, sometimes you'll get a number of different steps here, one through to three or five or six. Um, and basically, depending on the com complexity of the problem, you might have to run through several steps before the software identifies and narrows down uh, where the fault is and, and what needs to be changed if anything does. So we've only got one test here. We'll click on next. So now on the procedure we've got these different functions that we need to to go through. So function check, click on next and the charging pressure at engine standstill is measured in the next test step and is compared with the ambient pressure and exhaust back pressure. So we'll click on next. OK, data transmission to interface disturbed. Click OK. So now it's charging pressure values, ambient pressure and exhaust back pressure. As you can see, it's monitoring those pressures at the moment. So you can see that uh, all three of those pressure readings in millibars are pretty much the same, very similar values. And you can see on the right hand side here, charging pressure control. Uh, it gives you all the descriptions and overviews of everything associated with with this particular problem. Okay, so you can see there that the, the pressures are all remaining pretty much in the same vicinity, just over a thousand millibars. So we'll now click on next. So possible causes of fault if the target value is not reached. So this is telling you what the possible causes are. So click on next. Oh, wiring diagram. So this is uh, a wiring diagram associated with the sensors. So if we click to full screen, we can zoom in. And you can see here These are our various boost pressure actuator. Okay, we've got um, we've zoomed into full screen now to, for the wiring diagram. Uh, we've got the boost pressure sensor here. Uh, you can click on each of these, and it brings up the detail of whatever you're clicking on. So component description gives you all of the information here gives you what the pin the pins are and what the voltages should be on each of the pins so the way the BMW software works is that as you go into different faults it brings up the relative information uh, associated with that fault and that part of the of the car so we come out to full screen so it gives you here on the left possible causes of the fault if the target value is not reached. So lines, plug connections defective, charging pressure sensor defective, ambient pressure sensor faulty or exhaust sensor faulty. So we'll click on next. So that effectively was a, a functional check. If we select check lines and plug connections and click next So it's telling you to check the following lines and plug connections. So we've got these three locations here. Uh, and it tells you exactly what to do, basically. So all you've got to do is follow, follow it word for word. If there's zero volts, so short circuit to ground at the supply of the sensor, or 12 voltage, short circuit to B+, observe the following. That the sensor is connected with other sensors to a common supply, a short circuit within this communal supply can also cause fault code entries at other sensors. Check the communal supply of the sensors according to the wiring diagram, repair all plug connections and lines if necessary and go to selection. Okay, what we'll do is we'll take this one here, M LDF 31. We go to the wiring diagram, 
full screen. And here, M LDF over here. So M LDF, and here you can see 31. Okay, so it shows you exactly what you need to go to, where you need to go to, um, to do various checks. And functional description, again, giving you all the information, that, the background information that you need. So now we're back to the selection list. We'll click on the third one now, check the charging pressure sensor. Click on next. So the signal voltage of the charge pressure sensor is measured in the next step. So it's basically saying stop the engine, because at the moment the engine's running, uh, and switch on terminal 15. So we'll go and do that now. Okay, so I've just gone and turned the engine off. Um, press the uh, start stop button to get the ignition on, terminal 15. So now I'll click on next. Right, because I've disconnected and reconnected again, it's just scanning for the, the interface again. Okay, so what we have now, it's reconnected uh, because I accidentally switched the uh, ignition off, so had to reconnect the uh, diagnostics. It's gone back to exactly where it was. Procedure now, signal voltage measurement. So it's telling you what to probe, um, those points that uh, I showed you, the one on the electrical wiring diagram, and you just want you to punch in what the voltages are. You've got the pop-up keyboard here that you can use. The beauty about the pop-up keyboard is that it only allows you to press keys that are relevant. So you can't accidentally press something or do something that uh, isn't allowed, basically. So it's getting you to uh, test probe um, those two locations, A LDF and M LDF 31. Click on the wiring diagram, full screen, and here we have A LDF 31, M LDF 31 there. screen to go back again. Okay, so it's saying um, what's the set point read? So the set point is 0.9 to 1.3 volts. And a note, uh, the measured voltage depends primarily on the height above sea level at the time. So if we say yes to that, because obviously we've put the sensor back again, so it should all be working now. Click on next, and you can go back and do with the uh, the selection steps you, uh, again. So you might want to do that, for example, if the sensor was faulty and it said swap the sensor, you just run through this all again to make sure that the new sensor is working fine. So we'll click on End Test Module with Feedback. Next. Uh, so it's saying which cause of fault was determined. So we'll just say no, no fault found. And that will register in the uh, in the memory. Okay, what we're going to do is go into vehicle management, uh, go into search text. We'll type in pressure sensor. Press return. It's telling you how many hits it's got for pressure sensor. Click on display. And if you remember from the the right hand informational. Um, description when we were going through the procedures it had the same diagram there so this is basically uh, a d functional description when we went through the uh, procedure and test plan so basically the BMW software drags all the information whether it's repair information wiring diagrams and so on as you go through the test plan for each uh, specific test um, so it brings all the information to your fingertips as you need it. So you don't have to physically go into the repair manual to find out how to change things. You don't have to go into the wiring diagram to find out where, where it is. Um, it brings it all up as and when you need it. So it's quite intelligent in that sense.